And now men want to ask me why I'm not into the playoffs this weekend. I'm sorry. I'm so busy covering the incredible hardcore news that I haven't even gotten into the ninth planet that was discovered that they announced last week. And, of course, they discovered it a long time ago. They just got around to telling us. And there's a reason they didn't get around to telling us about it. I am someone who always got sick and tired of hearing about Planet X. Because as long as I've been on the air, people are saying, it's coming next year, it's coming in three years, it's going to happen. The ancients said it comes through every 20,000 years in a different type of orbit that doesn't go in circles around the sun, but goes way out past the Kuiper belt and comes in basically at an elliptical. And then I started reading deeper into this planet, and it, there it was, a 20,000-year deformed orbit going out into deep space, 10 times the size of the Earth. It is Planet X, folks. Isn't that just perfect that this would just show up while all this circus is going on? Now, now I want to be clear about this. It fits the bill of Planet X. They're probably... 50, 60, 100, 1,000, I don't know, Planet X's. They've already chronicled hundreds and hundreds of planetoids bigger than Pluto in the Kuiper Belt out past the former ninth planet, named after the god of the underworld, a fitting name, the Roman god of hell. So they said, no more ninth planet, because we got to say we have hundreds of planets if there's things bigger than it. Well, Pluto's little. This sucker is gigantor. Compared to Pluto. They're in the news today, meteorologists talking about how the moon being full during the blizzard is going to make it worse, and it, and, it, and it does. It affects space winds, winds of space, the sun, and a lot more. Why the full moon could make this weekend's blizzard more destructive. Who knows what this planet is going to do coming closer in to the solar system. Because here's the deal, it's been way out there for however long, and now they've tracked its course and think it's every 20,000 years, right out of what the ancient Babylonians and the Mayans and all these other cultures said this big planet comes through and that there's earthquakes and volcanoes and all hell breaks loose, and it comes through every 20,000 years, and then now here it comes. Now, I don't know if this is the one, because there's so many of them out there. Who knows what's out there? We're too busy looking at Hillary Clinton and going, I'm voting for her because she's a woman. Who cares? What I'm getting at is we don't have time for racism and sexism and all this fighting and all this garbage and all this divide and conquer when we have genetic engineering going on, splicing and mutating every species on the planet like something out of H.G. Wells, the island of Dr. Maru, squared planet x they discovered it 10 times bigger than earth the size of neptune a gas giant with a 20,000 year orbit exactly what a bunch of the ancients said they said it when it comes back through it causes massive catastrophes volcanoes you name it by the way kit gave me a whole stack of articles about record volcanoes i laid it somewhere i think in there by the coffee pot uh but uh, i'm gonna have to actually get to that Halfway into the hour with Michael Schneider from the Economic Collapse blog and get his take on it. And, and, and here's the deal, folks. I, I don't want to say I'm eating my hat on this, but I've been very, very critical of the perennial books that have been coming out since the mid-90s about Planet X is coming. It's a gas giant, 20,000-year elliptical orbit. You know, the uh, Babylonians talked about it, the Zoroasters, the Mayans. I never said that I didn't think that there aren't a whole bunch of planets out there, they've proven there's hundreds of them, that are out in the Kuiper Belt past Pluto. 
That's why they delisted it, as I said earlier. What I was getting at is constantly saying it's coming next year and constantly saying it's the end of the world and the movie 2012, and then I get blamed for it. They would, I mean, there's so many news articles going, Alex Jones is the one who said we didn't go to the moon and that aliens run everything and that the Himalayas are going to be, you know, at sea level. Uh, when, uh, hey, Alex, 2012 didn't kill everybody. And so it just gets old. But it does show how the ancients were certainly right about big planets that come through, and there are big disasters, and there are big asteroids that hit the Earth, and there are big Earth changes, and the elite shouldn't be the focus of everything. They're all busy. I saw another headline last week going, Alex Jones says the elite want off-world colonies to escape Earth. I was quoting top elitist on their way to Davos saying that was going to be up for discussion. It was mainstream news. So even when there's mainstream news that, you know, Thiel and all these other folks and, and, and you know, the uh, Tesla owner and all the rest of it are saying we need a Mars colony for the elite, I cover what they say, and then they go, Alex is crazy and made this up. So see, that's how they operate. They think you're stupid. But I tell you, uncanny that the ancients said 20,000 years, bigger than the Earth, and all the rest of it, and here it is. Um, the question is, we're trying to look at its orbit. I mean, is it even scheduled? I guess it's coming in closer. That's what they're saying. That's how they're able to, to see it now. It's coming in from this orbit. What is it? They're saying many, many, many times further out from Pluto. Glad to have you on the show. You know, we've been getting a lot of discussion about this green orb and lots of different theories on it. Um, haven't heard anything yet that makes any sense. Uh, it's not a lens flare, guys, because it shows up at nighttime when there is no light. So it makes us a little bit concerned. I'm starting to think that maybe it is some kind of a fixed object put up there by our space program to help with this situation. Um, here's a picture where we can actually see the shield again in a sideways view. You can actually see how, how it how is blocking whatever's behind it. Kind of interesting. And then we've got the red blood moons. Now the reason I wanted to get into the main, uh, this is from Arizona last night, we have red moons, blood moons all the time now. Anyway, the, what I wanted to get into, what is the main issue here, right? Is the main issue us proving to the world that this thing exists, uh, that this solar system exists? I mean, none of us really kind of know what's going to happen, really. I mean, we know it's there. We have the Coburn Bible. We have history. We have different things we can look at and say, yeah, well, these are the signs of the coming of this thing. My, 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 my thing is, what's important about that? What's important about this coming in? Is it important because it's going to affect our world? I think it already is. Here's one where we can actually see two suns. Three, one, two, three, four, <laughs> four suns <laughs> in that picture. Hi, Cricket. That was from Cricket, by the way. But yeah, and uh, you know what's important here? You know, um, okay. So we know what's coming in. We believe it. We see it. There are people that that uh, have enough facts in front of them to say it's here, right? I mean, that's fine. Uh, but now what, right? I mean, now what? It's it's okay. It's one thing you see it, but what does it do to your faith? What does it do to your position in the world? What does it do to your thought process? And these are the things that we grapple with at WSO all the time, man. I mean, this is I'm in the same boat as you. What does this all mean? You know, why or what is important about it? Yeah, I've got two stars in the sky. Um, right now, I still have food in my refrigerator too. Um, now that I've got you thinking about what what's important. Uh, for a minute here. I want to go back to a quote from John Moore. Here's an interesting photograph from nighttime photograph that I was going to just play with a little bit. Let's take a look at it in the sense of looking at the color controls here and saturate it up a little bit. Take the brightness up a little bit. 
Yeah, that's a normal thing to see up in the sky, ain't it? And, um, you know, it looks nebulous and stuff. We're seeing these pictures all the time. Here's one where we can actually see some kind of a device. So I'm looking at, what the hell is that? <laughs> so I'm thinking of what John Moore said to me one day. I was talking to John, and I go, John, what do you think the date of this thing is going to be? You know, Nibiru. Looks like an airplane going sideways there. He said, why do you want to know? Like, Gosh, I guess I never really thought about that, John. Um, why would I want to know? Um, I don't know. Tell me. Why don't you tell me why I want to know? He goes, you want to know so that you want to... You want to know when it's coming so you can put off your preparations to that moment when it's absolutely necessary. Man, did that sting. Because if you're in this community and you know this stuff is coming and you're not preparing and you're always asking when the date's going to be of the arrival of it, I suspect that Mr. John is right. Anyway, I don't know what this object is. She caught it by accident. It doesn't look like any kind of a, you know, uh, could be a helicopter, I suppose. But, man, what is that? Weird, huh? And then let's take a look at this. This is another one that, you know, we start to see these skywalkers. Check out this guy down here. So all I'm trying to say is if you're wondering what the date is of the next event of this thing, you know, the position of WSO is that it's already here. And that we're already starting to see weird phenomenon connected to it. And we have since 2003. We got a cloud walker right there. Some kind of a cloud walker. What you doing up there, boy? <laughs> I don't know if it's a cloud walker or just a cloud, but we've been seeing a lot of those. Here's that. Here is a neat uh, set of pictures. Let me get these blown up a little bit for you so you can see them better. Now check this out. So we're looking at uh, Good News Bay West on Wednesday the 31st today, and this would be, I guess it would be in the afternoon. Let's check it. Blink, 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 blink. That's weird. There's the moon. What's that? That's the moon. What is this? Well, I'd have to say that that's one of the objects in the Nibiru system, wouldn't you? Again, it's here. It's not like, you know, we don't need a date, guys. It's here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's time to start getting ready. And so in that interest, I wanted to get, let you know and just remind you that we have the events coming up in uh, Boise in August, early August, 4th and 5th, and then in Minneapolis where you'll get a chance that, look, guys, we're not just going to talk about the reality of this thing or, uh, and those kinds of things. We actually have a whole lineup of guests that are going to talk about the history of it, preparing for it, what are the common sense things we can do, um, you know, talking about how to build your own safe havens, um, just having the networking and all that kind of stuff going on. It's going to be excellent. The moon goes, whoop. So the moon, the moon and this little guy here are passing in the night. Night. That is weird. Let's take a look at the ISS. So yeah, make sure you sign up for one of the events. And WSO Live and the Truth Network that we're building up right now, guys, we're getting so much steam on that. You know why we're getting steam on it? Um, you got to go check out the video I did on uh, on GNN today, and it was talking about cappers. And what it is is that they are basically convincing us that the government's broke when they are not broke at all. They've been st storing up our rev our revenues for years and years, and we didn't know about it. Now this ISS picture here is like uh, very interesting, and it's because of that green shade that we're seeing there and a parent object in the back very very interesting um, and then here's more pictures of that thing that was up in the sky that we didn't know what it was <laughs> I don't know what the heck that thing is um, here is something we got to pay attention to these eruptions are starting to affect our armor atmosphere so the particulate that we're seeing, you know, from these volcanoes that I believe are being caused by the proximity the system, they say, well, why isn't the planet going crazy? If your planets are so close, why is the planet going crazy? Uh, the planet is going crazy. This is from 28th May. It was a large explosion <laughs> in Alaska. Very interesting. Last piece I want to show you guys. And again, I'm going to keep showing the evidence for people that don't know it's real. So they can say, oh, there is something wrong going on in the sky. But for you longtime listeners... We're looking at the evidence and stuff like that. There is no dates anymore, guys. It's here. So the question that John Moore asked me, and I'm going to ask you, is why are you waiting for a date? Are you waiting for a date so that you can prepare, so you can put off prep preparing until then? If that's the case, then I don't support your date. Everybody should be prepared for disaster and catastrophe. That's just a, that's just a common sense way to live. And in today's world, it's more important than ever. So make sure you know, make sure you're doing that. Even little preparations, having extra food, having extra water. You know, it, it's not going to kill anybody to have that. And nobody's going nobody's gonna to get hurt by that. So do it. 
Now check out this final piece that I want to show you here. Dun, dun, dun. This one is the most weird one because it actually, you can see it rotating, guys. Look at how it rotates. It's the first time I've seen this particular manifestation of it. This, to me, seems like the real object and the real size of the object in the sky. I don't think, oh my God, doesn't that look like what Daniel showed us the other uh, couple months ago? Yeah, I'd have to say that that's probably the brown dwarf. Look at that. You're going to try to tell me that's a lens flare, huh? Well, you know what I'm going to say is, you know, regardless of what you think or what I think, reality is going to be reality. Things are going to happen. Nat nature's going to take its course. We don't get to, we don't get to choose what reality is, guys. You just don't. Beliefs mean nothing. What about facts? And when I when we keep coming up with fact after fact after fact, at some point you just got to let yourself in to the fact that you accept that things are not the way they seem. That this is not a permanent um, manifestation. That everything is temporary and act accordingly. With that, I love you guys. Take care, and please don't fight with each other. Fight with the enemy. The true enemy of our souls is the one who lies to us. The one who tells the truth, that's a friend of your soul. That's the only thing you need to know. God bless. Bye.